So the last case that we're looking at with law of sines is this angle side side. And this is a tricky one because there can be multiple possibilities depending on the numbers you're getting out. So when we have angle side side, we need a little kind of red flag to go up to know to kind of slow down. And then we need to check some things before we can move forward. So there's going to be four possibilities that we're going to see. So with these cases, we're being given an angle A. So here's our angle A of 30 degrees for each of these. I'll just mark that throughout. So there's our angle A. And then we're given our side length B. So we have this B of 1 coming through. And then what we're getting is the side length for the side that's opposite of the 30 degrees. And what we can see is a case where it's pretty small of 0.3 here to 0.5, and it gets bigger and bigger. So what we're going to see is that depending on where this is landing, especially compared to B and another value that we'll look at, um, depending on that comparison, that'll set how our triangle looks. So what I want to draw is a side length of 0.3. And basically, without having a ruler and without making sure that this is actually all to scale here, I don't know if 0.3 looks like this. I don't know if it looks like this. Maybe it makes a right angle. I don't know if it looks like this. We don't know. And that's what, what makes this ambiguous, is we don't know how it's landing. Mostly because in those other cases, we had two angle measurements, so that told us the behavior there. With just being given a side length, there are a lot more possibilities without knowing that angle measurement. So I said that we're going to compare this value to B, and that will be a part of it. But something else we're going to compare it to is, what if we made this a right triangle? What is this distance right here? Because if it's shorter or longer than that, that can give us some information. So what I'm going to focus on here is finding a value for this height of the triangle. So if I make a 90 degree, let's say I have this letter H for the height of the triangle so I can get an idea of the scale of what that distance would look like. So if this is a right triangle, then I can use SOHCAHTOA. So if I take, I have my opposite side from 30 degrees and we have the hypotenuse. So what that would look like is sine of 30 degrees is equal to, um, opposite is h over hypotenuse of one. Now sine of 30 degrees, we know what that is from our unit circle. So if I just drew a quick unit circle over here, 30 degrees landed there, and that gave us our coordinate what, root 3 over 2, 1 half. Oh, I drew that real small there. Really, I just want to grab that y coordinate. So 1 half is equal to h divided by 1, which is just h. So that's giving me a height of 0.5. So if this distance is 0.3, imagine if I just tied a string here. So if I tied a string here and let it drop, to hit the ground, it would be 0.5. Now if I cut that string to make it a length of 0.3, the fact that it's smaller than 0.5, what that would look like is the string would drop down and it would stop there. Now I'm okay, like it doesn't have to drop straight down, I, could, I just want to hit anywhere on this line here that's extended from the 30 degrees. However, if I swing that around, it's never going to intersect down there. We were given a side length that's too small. This is a case where there is no triangle that fits. We can't make a triangle with this case here. So when, when this happens is if you find the height of the triangle and that side length is smaller than that height, then there's no triangle. So that's our rule for this first one. In general, If your value for side length A, or it could be a different letter, but it's the side length that you're trying to draw, if that is shorter than the height of the triangle, then there is no triangle. 
we would just say no solution or even just no triangle and then we'd move on from that problem. Now let's say we didn't think too much about the drawing and just kind of jumped in. Let's say I did just draw a line and say that line is 0.3 and I went to use law of sines, so the fact that I have an angle and two side lengths. So let's just say, I'm actually going to delete everything I did there. Well, let's just say I went straight to solving. I just made my sketch. I didn't care too much about it. I said, yeah, something like that and something like that. Cool. Then let's say I just started using law of sines here. The fact that I have this pairing of 30 degrees and 0.3. And then let's say I wanted to find this, um, this would be beta down here. Let's say I wanted to go ahead and find beta. So what that would look like is we'd have sine of 30 degrees over 0.3 is equal to sine of beta, which is unknown, over 1. And then I would go ahead and I'm going to solve for beta here. So what that will look like is actually dividing by 1 doesn't do anything. So we have that right there. To solve for beta, we're solving a trigonometric equation. We're solving for an angle. So I need my inverse sine. So I'm going to take inverse sine of everything over there. So inverse sine of sine of 30 degrees over 0.3. And we could have even simplified sine of 30 degrees. We found that before. That's our 1 half. So you could plug it in like that. You could plug it in. This is going into the calculator. So, so let's go to the calculator and see what happens. So I'm taking arc sine of 0.5 divided by 0.3, and the calculator says it's undefined. And that's just confirming what we found already, that this triangle does not exist. So this comes out to be undefined, which just shows that what we said down below, there's no triangle. So I kind of wanted to show you these two cases here where you can see it visually by comparing the height of the triangle with that side length, but also if you just kind of jumped into calculation mode, there is this fallback of the calculator will tell you it doesn't work. All right, let's look at this case here, and I'm even going to draw that height again that we already found, because this is going to be exactly the same if I went to find height. It would be that one half coming from sine of 30 degrees. And in this case, we're saying that side length A is equal to 0.5. So if I drop that perpendicular and have that height of 0.5, and we're saying that side length is exactly equal to it, it's that that side length is going to create a right triangle. So this is a case where the height of the triangle is exactly equal to the side length. And what that's do, going to do is make a 90 degree angle, like where we went through all of that to find beta up above there. If I needed to find beta, I just found it is 90 degrees because that value for 0.5 is also our value for A. So with this case, this is a real short one, but mostly because we already did that work to find that height of 0.5, but in general, if that side length is equal to the height of the triangle, then your solution is that you have one right triangle. And again, our work here is to probably end up solving these triangles, but it's that we would know that's 90 degrees, so then we can solve for that angle, what that would be 60 degrees. And then here we could actually use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for this missing side length because it's a right triangle. So, all right, so those are our first two cases, case where the triangle doesn't exist, uh, one where the triangle is actually a right triangle, so we'll have a 90 degree angle in there. Now let's look at this case with 0.7. So if I visualize that height here of 0.5, Again, let's say I imagine that this was kind of a string, a distance of 0.5. So if I made this a string of 0.7, it would go longer. And let's say I wanted to swing it around until it hits 
the sides there. What this is do gonna do is it could hit in two possible spots here, meaning we're gonna see something like this where 0.7 could look something like this or something like this. And I wish I could draw these way more exact, but the idea should be in between here, if I drop that height again, we should have this nice isosceles triangle here because this is 0.7, this is also 0.7. But in terms of possible triangles, we get these two cases. We have this one here, and we also have this larger one on the outside. So this is coming from our side length A is longer than our height of the triangle. Also something to note is that it's also shorter than 1, like 0.7 hits here. So that's why we get this kind of second crossing right here. Well, that might become, that might be more obvious in the next case that we talk about. But what's going to happen here is in general, if this side length A is longer than the height, so if I call that H, but also shorter than B. So how I'm going to write that is that H should be the shortest of them. So A is going to be longer than the height, but shorter than that side length B. Then we're going to end up with two triangles. So two triangles. What this is going to look like, and I like to draw these separate, so like there's this one, um, so I'm going to draw this kind of inside one first. So, ooh, sure, good enough, not good enough, one more time. <laughs> Something like that. So we have our 30 degrees, we have the 0.7, and we have B. Let's say we wanted to find beta, because yeah, let's just focus on beta for now. Um, the other pieces could come through with law of sines, and we'll get more practice with that. But let's say I wanted to find beta, and I would have beta in this case, and in the other case where my triangle looks more like this, where we have 30 degrees, we have 0.7, we have, sorry, instead of B, we have a number there, one, one, and this is another beta. And what you can see from the pictures is that one is acute and one is, I didn't draw this very well, but um, obtuse. So you're gonna get two different numbers for these angle measurements coming through here. So let's see when we're solving which one comes through. So in terms of a pairing, I have this 30 degrees and 0.7. So using law of sines, I can use that sine of 30 degrees over 0.7 is equal to, and then let's work with beta and B. So that would be sine of beta over one. And solving through, again, dividing by one isn't actually doing anything. So there would be my sine of beta. Um, so for solving for beta, we would have inverse sine of, so again, since I have sine there, it's like to cancel it out, I'm taking inverse sine of both sides, so that's where we end up with inverse sine of everything on that left-hand side. For sine of 30 degrees, that's just the same as 0.5 and over 0.7. So when I go to the calculator and just plug that in, inverse sine of 0.5 over 0.7, I get a 45.58 degrees out. And what that's telling me, if I look at my two possible betas, so here's one that's up two, so that should be more than 90 degrees, that doesn't line up with what's happening here. The calculator is giving us this value right here which makes sense in terms of how we worked with inverse sine, like inverse sine was stuck between um, negative pi over two and positive pi over two, which is the same as negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees. 
which really in terms of triangles, we won't have negative angles. So really we're stuck between zero and 90 degrees. So when you use your calculator, it's gonna give you this angle measurement for beta, the one that's happening over here. Um, so I'm gonna call these beta one and beta two, and we just found um, beta one right there. And then with that, so we find that angle measurement for there, and then we could go ahead and find gamma and then use law of sines to find C. So that would all fall through. What we don't have is the solution to this triangle. So part of this work is that we need to solve both triangles because both are solutions for this scenario. So what I need to do is find a way to find beta two. So let's go back to this picture right here. And we just found that this is 45.58 degrees. And something that I said very quickly earlier, but we can still see right here, is that this triangle right here is isosceles. We have two of the same lengths there. And when that happens, that means the two angles along the base are exactly equal to each other. So this right here is a 45.58 degrees, which means we're almost there because what I'm actually interested in is this angle measurement right here. But as you can see, it's forming a um, straight line. So with that, they are supplementary to each other. So I can do is to find that angle, this which would be our beta two, that would come from taking 180 degrees minus 45.58. And that will be the relationship each time. That's gonna be the routine with these, and we'll go through an example with it, where you'll find this angle measurement on the kind of, I think of it as the larger triangle, mostly in terms of area, it just covers more space. Um, you'll find the angle there and solve that triangle completely. And then when we go to this triangle, we start off at that angle and it's just 180 minus that angle you got from your calculator. So beta two, if you plug that into a calculator, should be 134.42 degrees. So then we would have this obtuse measurement there. Then we can find gamma and then using law of sines, find C. So that case right there, we need to look at the height of the triangle and do this comparison and seeing that the height is the shortest piece compared to that side length that we're trying to draw, but that also the side length we're trying to draw is shorter than the side length we already have. So it's kind of this comparison there. Our last one here, and this can kind of help with the visual of that kind of this comparison of A and B, so if I think about that height of 0.5, or think of it like that string that's a distance of 0.5, and now I'm gonna have this string that's 1.3, which is even longer than this side length here. So it's like, even if I drew it over there, it would go beyond. So maybe it looks something like, ooh, maybe I don't have enough space on the paper. But the idea is, okay, that's too long, and if I swing it around until it hits perfectly, it's like over here, okay, there we'd have an intersection point, so we'd start to have a triangle working there that is a distance of 1.3, but then if I swing it over here, it's gonna miss. It isn't gonna cross over on this side. So that's the comparison I was trying to describe there, is that since 0.7 was shorter than one, that's why we get this double crossing. But when it's super long and goes beyond that, then when we swing it, it doesn't cross over on that left-hand side, only on the right-hand side. So with this, what's gonna happen is we get one triangle. But in general, if A is more than or equal to B, so if we're given this side length that's opposite of that angle and it's larger than the side length you already have drawn, then you get one triangle for the solution. Do not worry about memorizing these. I would say write this down on a 
little piece of paper to have ready to go for when this ambiguous case comes up. Um, memorizing these can be tough, but um, I don't have them memorized. I have a little sheet that I refer to. So in this case, let's say we want to go ahead and find beta. So we just need to work with this one triangle. So what I do is law of sines. So we have that sine of 30 degrees compared to 1.3 is equal to sine of beta over one. Again, dividing by one doesn't really do anything. So beta is gonna be equal to inverse sine of sine of 30 degrees is 0.5 if you wanted to simplify it. If you just type in sine of 30 into the calculator, that's completely fine. So beta would be 22.62 degrees to solve for that. All right, there's all of our cases. Um, we didn't really go through examples coming across and that's what we'll do in the next video. But these are the four possibilities when you have are given an angle side side and you just want to be careful when that occurs because there might be no answer or your answer might be a right triangle or you might actually need to solve two separate triangles or you might just have one oblique triangle to solve.